الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises to do God We praise Him, we seek His guidance and His forgiveness Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides none shall be able to misguide and whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to be misguided none shall be able to guide and we bear witness that there is no deity worthy of our of our worship and our utmost of love and devotion except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God almighty and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger and prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all mankind be God conscious of your Lord who created you from one soul and from that one soul he created man and woman and from them he created many nations and tribes and be conscious of your Lord whom you seek his aid to fulfill the obligation of the kin Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all watchful over you. O you who believe, be God conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and speak the truth, speak the best of speech so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may rectify your deeds and mine. And indeed, whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger has won a great victory. Amma ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا قرئ عليكم القرآن وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم تحمد If the Qur'an is recited listen to it attentively and be still so that you may receive mercy. In general, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an never commands us to listen with isma'u, which is simply to hear. Instead, He uses the emphatic form, istima' was stemio means listen attentively. The difference between sama' and istima' is like the difference between hearing and listening. Hearing, you might be walking in the street and something just crosses your ear. But to listen means your attention is directed towards the sound. And you know our ears is one of our only senses, if not the only sense, much more so than the eye, where it can pick up sound even without us trying to. We need not direct our ears to pick up a particular sound. It will pick it up from behind us, from next to us, from in front of us, the ear will pick up sound. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that's not the type of hearing that He wants us to have when we're reading the Qur'an. He wants us to have istima. But the amazing thing is, is He goes further than that. It is not enough that you listen attentively. He also wants insult. And insult is to listen with every organ and atom of your body. There is a listening that's specific to the hands. There is a listening that's specific to the heart. There is a listening that's specific to the mind, to the legs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing every single atom of your body and mind. So it is not enough that we listen attentively with our ears. We also have to be completely still not to preoccupy any part of our body or our soul or our spirit so that each of them can listen. Why? 
so that you may receive mercy. Now, this verse is telling us about how to engage with the Qur'an, but it is a principle for how we should engage with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, while we're on this earth. Especially as we head into one of the most blessed months that requires from us the most amount of stillness and silence. It is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us throughout the year, you're the one who's talking. Now it's time for you to listen. You've asked me, you've wanted things. Now hear my response. But hear it with your entirety. And that's the reality of fasting. Some of the Muslim saints, they said that the relationship of the human being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is either as a muhaddith or muhaddath, either as a speaker or spoken to. If you wish to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will listen. But if you want to hear Him speak, you have to be silent. Because if you speak and He speaks, then there is a breach of adab. The adab is not maintained. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَخَشَعَتِ الْأَصْوَاتُ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ all the voices on the day of judgment they will be lowered in the presence of God because that is the ultimate day of insult that is the ultimate day of listening attentively because he's the only one who's speaking that day and whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given permission to but we experience that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the month of Ramadan to experience that Learn to whisper with your heart. The hams. Learn to whisper with your heart. And listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasting is abstaining. Fasting means to abstain. Abstaining from what? Imam Ghazali gives us the stages and the levels of fasting. At the lowest level, it is to fast from food and drink. And that is something that animals can do if you train them to do that. You can stop them from eating and drinking. That is the lowest level of fasting. To the degree that the Prophet said, whosoever's fasting did not deter his tongue from backbiting and slandering, Allah has no need for them to stop eating and drinking. So Imam Ghazali says, after that, there is sawm al jawarah fasting of the limbs. Now, you're able to silence your, your carnal desires. Have you paid attention to your limbs? They want to be silent too. The amazing thing is, is our hands, when we use them to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not natural for them. It is natural for them to want to obey God. And so your hands, and your feet, and your heart, and your soul, and your ears, and all of your jawah, all of your limbs are longing to fast. Oftentimes, much more than you and I. Because we're the ones who have the ego. Our hands, they will come as witnesses on the Day of Judgment. يَوْمَ تَشْهَدُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَلْسِنَاتُهُمْ وَأَبْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ وَأَلْسِنَاتُهُمْ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَبْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ On that day, our tongues and our hands and our feet will testify against us. Oh Allah, I never wanted him to do what he did. I was forced. I wanted to fast. So Imam Ghazali says, if you're able to stop your carnal desires, now stop your limbs. Put them into silence. Put them into insult. 
stillness. One of the most beautiful verses in the Bible is be still and know that I am God. If you take the entire surah of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Sayyidina Musa, Innani an Allah. Indeed, it is me, I am God. There is double emphasis. Innani, indeed I am, or indeed it is I, Anna, I am Allah, God. And he tells them, Innani ma'akuma asma'u wa ara. I am with you, I hear and I see. What do you expect to hear and see more than Allah can hear and see? La takhafa. Don't be afraid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Harun, Don't be afraid. I am your ear and I am your tongue. Or I am your ear and I am your, I am your hearing and I am your sight. That is the natural conclusion to your ear or your hearing and your sight going into stillness. As it is mentioned in the Hadith Qudsi, once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a servant, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُ If He loves you, what happens? كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ I become the hearing, not the ear. I become the hearing. Your ear is the same. But your ability to hear changes. He doesn't say, Kuntu udnuhu allati yasma'u He says, Kuntu sam'ahu allati yasma'u bi. I become the hearing through which he hears. Your, your, your ear stays the same. But what you hear is completely different. Wakuntu basaruhu allati yubsiru bi. And your eye stays the same. But what you see is unlike anything anybody else sees. So the natural conclusion, if you, if you fast in your entirety, what happens? It's like you become a, an example, an embodiment of be still and know that I am God. Let me hear for you. I am here for you. Let me hear for you. Let me see for you. Let me be the eyes through which you see the Prophet Sallallahu said, إحذر, it's a hadith or an athar that's maybe narrated from the Sahaba, إحذر فراسة المؤمن فإنه ينظر بنور الله. Be aware of the clairvoyance, of the unveiling of the believer, for indeed they see with the light of God. Now, your limbs, your limbs are fasting. Your limbs are still. Imam Ghazali says, the next step is what? Is fasting of your thoughts. Fasting of what? Fasting of your thoughts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked you and I to leave during this month of Ramadan things that are permissible. There is a story about two ladies, two Muslim ladies, who during the month of Ramadan, they were backbiting. And subhanAllah, they started vomiting blood. Excuse me for the, for the image, but they started vomiting blood. And of course, it's because backbiting is like eating the flesh of, of your believing brother or sister. So when they went to the Prophet Sallallahu the Prophet Sallallahu said to them, he said, Sama amma ahalla lahum Allah wa aftara amma harram Allah ala ma harram Allah. Oh, kama qal Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, they abstained from what Allah has made permissible for them. But they broke their fast on what Allah has prohibited for them, which is backbiting. So you stop yourself from indulging in what Allah has made permissible out of love for Him. Now 
you go the extra step and you make sure your limbs are still and they're not engaging in anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then come your thoughts. Now we have, we're ascending. Brothers and sisters are ascending. You ascend from the realm of the body to the realm of the mind. And now you want to make your thoughts still. Where are they roaming? What are they thinking about? It is said, and you should realize that the lives of the saints outside of Ramadan is like most of us during Ramadan. One of the saints, he was known to stand up into Hajjud at night. And then one day he came at night and he lost all the sweets. It was gone. I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what happened? He said, Remember you were walking in the street and you saw a young man reading Quran crying. And it came to your heart in a split second that that young man is showing off. He said, Oh Allah, but it was just a passing thought. And as soon as it came to my heart, I rejected it. And look at the admonishment of love that Allah gave him. He said, someone of your stature should not even have those thoughts. So he lost the sweetness for months before he could get it back. Nowadays, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very gentle with us. As the Prophet sallallahu says, addressing the Sahaba, there will come a time, says, addressing the Sahaba, he says, now, if you miss one-tenth of what I'm asking you to do, Allah will take you into account. There will come a time, people will do one-tenth of what you're doing, and they will be rewarded double what you're rewarded. So we have this month to learn how to be still. Then you learn how to make your thoughts still. Then Imam Ghazali he says, once you transcend the level of the mind, comes the ultimate reality of fasting. Sawmul Aghiyab which is fasting from everything and everyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the part I want to focus on for the rest of the khutbah. Because we might have an understanding that to fast from everything and everyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means to physically leave dunya. To physically seclude ourselves from dunya. And naturally enough, we live in a time where we're overwhelmed by information. We're overwhelmed with, with distractions. And so we take the month of Ramadan to seclude ourselves. But we know from the life of the Prophet ﷺ that the Sahaba and the Prophet ﷺ had the greatest political accomplishments during the month of Ramadan. The most well-known of which is the Battle of Badr. It was during the 17th of Ramadan. It was during the 17th of Ramadan. So now, when we connect the verse that we began with, be silent, listen attentively, and be still. And Imam Ghazali is telling us, the highest level of fasting is fasting from everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means... You have been speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the year. Now it is time for you and I to be still and to listen to Him speaking to us through everything. To witness Him in the roses, in the trees, to hear Him speaking to you in the classroom, at work, at the coffee shop, in the people you engage with, in the poor person that you give money on the street, in the sick person that you visit, in the memories of your childhood that you have, when you go to sit with your family for iftar, when you're struggling, 
You remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say on the day of judgment addressing a servant, I was sick, why didn't you visit me? I was hungry, why didn't you feed me? Oh Allah, how can I feed you? How can I visit you? How can you be sick? You're the Lord of the heavens and the earth. He says, my servant so and so was sick. If you had visited them, you would have seen me at their side. I am with those whose hearts are broken for my sake. I am with those whose hearts are broken for my sake. Being, silence, and listening. And I intentionally made the title Being with Three Dots. Because it's either being by itself, silence by itself, and listening, or being silence, how to become silence. How to be silence. And the amazing thing in the English language is that silent and listen are anagrams. If you rearrange the letters of one word, you get the other one. It means if you want the miraculous nature of the English language, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whispers to you in every language. That doesn't exist in Arabic. In Arabic, something else happens, like sukun and sukut. Sukun is stillness, sukut is silence. Brothers and sisters, Ramadan is all about enhancing our existence in this life. It is not about recharging a battery and then going to drain it for 11 months of the year. Do you realize that the Prophet ﷺ said, جُعِلَتْ لِيَ الْأَرْضُ مَسْجِدًا The entire earth has been made as a masjid for me. Masjid only socially means the building. What it really means is the place of prostration. The Prophet ﷺ said, I have been given authority, a divine gift, that every single place on the face of the earth is a place of prostration. What does that mean? In an athar it is said, As-salatu mi'rajul mu'min. Prayer is the ascension of the believer. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Aqrabu ma yakunu abdu ila rabbihi wa huwa sajid. The servant is nearest to his Lord while he or she is in prostration. So if prayer is an ascension, and you're the closest to your Lord while you are prostrating, that means prostration is like going beyond the low tree and entering the Divine Presence. Now the Prophet ﷺ is saying every place on the face of the earth is a chance for you to enter into the Divine Presence. That realization is the true objective of Ramadan. You enter a month where the energy, where the, 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 the devils are chained, all in order to help you realize that. So that when the next month comes, Shawwal, and then the month after it, and after it, and after it, you're con you're, you've already realized, you're, you, you, now you crave being silent. You crave being still. Because now you're hearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak to you. I will end, insha'Allah, with a short story of a Sahabi who had reached that realization. And as far as we know, it wasn't during the month of Ramadan. It was outside the month of Ramadan. And I should mention that the narration of this hadith is weak, but since it does not pertain to matters of belief, we can take it as fadaqul al-a'mal, or um, you know, 
something to what's called muraqiqat, to soften the hearts. The Sahabi, the Prophet Sallallahu asked him, كيف أصبحت? How did you wake up? And by the way, it was the way of the Prophet Sallallahu and Muslim scholars and saints throughout history that every morning they ask all of their students about their dreams. To ask them about their dreams. Because they knew that the dream that a human being has is divine knowledge that is specifically given to that human being. That even a teacher might not have. And the Prophet Sallallahu in his case, he loved to interpret the dreams of the Sahaba. So he asked the Sahaba, he says, كيف أصبحت? And I don't remember the exact wording in Arabic. He said, I أصبحت مؤمنا حقا. He said, I woke up a believer truly. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, إِنَّ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَقِيقَةٌ إِنَّ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَقِيقَةٌ فَمَا حَقِيقَةُ إِيمَانِكَ Indeed, everything has a reality. What is the reality of your faith? And the meaning of what he said, he says, I can see paradise in front of me. And I can see hell in front of me. And I can see the sirat. And I can see people entering into paradise. And I can, ent I can see people entering into hell. And then the Prophet Sallallahu told him the meaning of it, عَرَفْتَ فَلْزَمْ You have come to know the truth, so hold on to it. That is the natural conclusion of being completely silent and still such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now the one who shows you. Like a beloved showing you the things that he loves. Because he loves you so much. He wants you to see the things that make him happy. And to show you the things that might be frightening, but that the purpose of it is that it will drive you away from Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften our hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us creative silence, and creative listening, and creative love, and creative fasting. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to to let us taste the reality of all things, especially the reality of fasting and the reality of the month of Ramadan and the reality of love. When we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He make this coming month of Ramadan particularly and especially a chance for us to, 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 to ascend in our existence while we are on the face of this earth. That He allows us through the month of Ramadan for the next year and many years to come inshaAllah that this month of Ramadan is a chance for us to ascend while we are physically in this life, to ascend spiritually in closeness to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that we become beacons of mercy and beacons of transmitting that light and that reality of ascension and creative fasting and the reality of listening and silence to all humanity and all of creation around us. Ibadallah in Allahi Amr bil Adli wa Ihsan wa Ita'i bil Qurba. وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة. <تصفيق> 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 حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح كالقامة الصلاة كالقامة الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الله وبحمد الله وسلم الصلاة والطيعة سيدنا محمد وسيدنا 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 الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين.
أزلفت الجنة للمتقين غير بعيد هذا ما توعدون لكل أواب حفير من خشي الرحمن بالغيب وجاء بقلب منيب ادخلوها بسلام ذلك يوم الخلود لهم ما يشاءون فيها ولدينا سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم جمعة مبارك It's so wonderful to see you all so many of us here and hopefully that helped us start to ease into 
Ramadan, inshallah, as we prepare um, our hearts and our spirits, inshallah, for this sacred month. We'd like to ask uh, Sister Arshi to come and share the du'a for us. Assalamualaikum, everybody. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm going to be reading a du'a that my friend Sheba, um, a fellow prince and alum, had written almost six years ago as we were reaching Ramadan. Um, so please raise your hand in du'a. Oh Allah, none has a right to be worshipped except you alone. You have no partner. Yours is a dominion. And to you is due all praise. O Allah, there is none who can withhold what you have given, and none may give what you have withheld. And the might of a mighty person cannot benefit them against you. O Allah, there is none worthy of worship but you alone, without any partner. The originator of the heavens and the earth, full of might and glory, the ever-living and eternal, we call upon you with the names you have revealed to us, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Forgive our sins, Ya Allah. Ya Latifu Ya Halim, we are weak, so be gentle with us. Ease our difficulties, Ya Allah. Heal our afflictions, be they of our bodies or of our souls. O giver of life, give life to our hearts. Let them not lie hard and cold, unmoved by the sufferings and injustices in our communities and in our world. O Allah, give us the strength, the courage, and the tawfiq to fulfill our duties to each other. And even where action is not possible, grant us in our souls the love and generosity, the selflessness to pray for those of our brothers and sisters who are in need, and grant us their prayers also. Ya Allah, open our eyes and fill our hearts with love for each other, for truth and for justice that we do not, while away our short time on this earth in ignorance or fear. Forgive us our sins, our Lord, and grant us the opportunity and the tawfiq to do better. Ya Allah, bless those of our community who have left this world, forgive their sins, and grant them a place amongst those who are beloved to you without reckoning. O oh Allah, as we look forward to this most beautiful, most blessed month of Ramadan, allow us, our Lord, to meet it in a state of humility and gratitude. Give us a tawfiq to take full advantage of this gift you have so generously bestowed upon us. O oh Allah, let our fasting be not simply an abstention from food and drink, but allow it to change us, to remind us of all the truth we have forgotten, and to elevate and purify us. O oh Allah, allow this month of fasting to not be lost on us, but make this Ramadan the Ramadan that changes us forever. The Ramadan that brings us closer to you and to your word. Allow us in this month to rekindle the flickering flames of our devotion, our conviction to reality. O oh Allah, let us greet this month in eagerness and desire for your closeness, your love, your forgiveness, and allow us not to waste even a second of these most blessed days, but protect us from the distractions of our daily lives, from the small frustrations, the lapses in judgment and temper which we so easily fall into. Ya Allah, do not leave this Allow us to not leave this month except in a better and more beautiful state than that in which we need it. O Allah, accept our prayers, accept our intentions, accept our good deeds, and send blessings upon our Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family and companions. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Thank you, Sister Arshi. Again, assalamu alaikum. Uh, let us go in peace. Uh, we have many visitors and new faces I'm recognizing. Uh, please uh, make sure that you take the time to introduce yourself. Say salams to those that you know and to those that you don't know. Again, welcome and uh, Jumaah Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum.